This is an art attack? This is an art attack. This is art attack. <laughs> to see you again. Hey, what do you think of sculpture? Well, stuff it, I say. Hey, no, I'm not being rude. I mean, stuff it. Like this. Stuffed sculpture. Look at that. Looks brilliant hanging on walls or just simply <laughs> hanging around. <laughs> and they're very easy to make. Come and have a look at this. Take a double-page spread from a big newspaper and just draw your sculpture design onto it. Now, you can do any design you like. Person, an animal. I'm going to do the lion, put the mane like that, and just do the basic design at this stage. You don't need too much detail in. Just do his face in there. Just make it big, bold, and funny. Very cartoon like. See that? I'll just finish it off there like that. And there he is, a lion. And when you're happy with your design, cut it out so that you have something that looks like this and you can add some more detail onto it at this stage if you want then draw around this onto another sheet of newspaper and cut that out so you have two identical shaped pieces and then just put one on top of the other like that so that they line up neatly then take a stapler and be careful with your fingers on this very carefully staple the two pieces together like that all the way around the edges now you need to do this quite carefully, I'm just doing it really quickly to show you here, all the way around, about two-thirds away around the edges like this. And don't forget to mind your fingers. And when you've gone about two-thirds of the way around, remember to stop like that. And when you've done that, it's time to stuff your sculpture. Now, for this, you need to lightly scrunch up bits of newspaper and stuff them inside the sculpture like that, through the opening that you've left. I'll do another one there to show you. See that? And it's a good idea to just poke some of these bits down with a ruler into the awkward areas if you need to. And remember, try not to be too rough or you'll tear the stapled edges. Keep going, and when your sculpture is padded enough, it should be a bit like a nice, soft pillow. And don't forget to staple up the gap so that it's stapled all the way around. Now that your sculpture is fully stuffed out, it's ready to paint. And it's best to use acrylic paint, or you could use poster paint for this, mixed with a little bit of PVA so that the paint won't crack. And I'm going to start with a nice, bright yellow. There we go. Just slopping it on as a base colour. How about a nice, rich brown for the mane? And a nice bright pink for inside the mouth there. And when you finish painting it all, you can add in some detail with black pen. And there it is, your stuffed sculpture. Good, isn't it? And you know, you can do all sorts of designs. How about some Christmas decorations? Here's a stuffed Santa. Or how about this? You can even lie down on a big sheet of newspaper, get someone to draw around you, and then stuff it. <laughs> what do you mean he's better looking than me? <laughs> and, you know, you can even make some Halloween decorations, like this ghost sculpture. <laughs> Try it yourself. Stuffed sculptures. Keep smiling. Oh, what a really good idea! Stuffed sculptures! Hello, yes, it's me again, the head. Now, if you want to make one for yourself, just remember to leave a third of your sculpture unstapled so you can stuff it. Then, when it's nice and plump, you can staple the rest up so that it's ready to paint. And don't worry if you didn't catch all of that, because you can check out the Art Attack website for fact sheets on this fantastic make and all the others in the show. Oh, yes!
cosa. Ahí. idea for a big heart attack. What a monstrous art attack! And that picture reminds me of my maths teacher, Mrs. Lovell. Eh? You want to see a picture of her? <laughs> she was an old dragon, too! <laughs> Sorry, Mrs. Lovell. Oh. you've seen this before. Look at this. Horrible, isn't it? The dirty water after you've been painting. It always seems to go a murky sludge brown colour. Down the drain? No way. It's perfect for creating old-fashioned looking sepia pictures. Watch this. If you just draw a picture of anything you like in pencil, and this technique works well for landscapes, portraits of people, animals and outdoor scenes. Then make sure your dirty water is really murky brown. You can add in some more paint to make it browner, if you like, and darker. And then just simply paint it across your picture in a rough oval shape. There it is. Slop it on and just get a sort of rough oval. Doesn't need to be neat or anything. See this? And it gives it a sort of misty sepia colour, a sort of light murky brown. Slopping it on again. And then just 
leave it to dry. Shouldn't take too long in here because all these lights are really hot. And when it is dry, just paint the background layer in a medium shade of sepia brown. So you want your dirty water darker, so just add more brown into it. And if you haven't got brown, just try mixing some red and green with a tiny bit of black just to make it darker. And then paint it onto your background. So there we go, slightly darker. And just following the shapes that were drawn. Like that. And it won't smudge because the first layer is dry. And it's just a case of picking out all those bits of your picture that are sort of a medium shade. And again, just a little bit of the detail. Like that. Just medium shade stuff. And again, when you've done that, just leave it to dry. And when that's dry, you need a darker brown for the foreground. And again, just mix more paint with less water this time. Put lots of paint in there. Make it nice and dark, nice rich brown now. It's gone from light, dirty brown to a sort of rich brown. And then just paint it on your foreground bits. And this shouldn't be as runny this time. Look at that, there's more paint there. And you can hint at a few bits of detail at this stage. Not too much, though. And then, when you've done that, leave that one to dry. And the idea then is to pick out some detail with even darker brown or even a brown felt tip pen. The idea really is to create a picture using different shades of brown instead of colours. So here we go. And there's hardly any water on the brush now at all. Mostly paint. And when you're finished, you should have an old fashioned sepia picture which looks like it has faded around the edges thanks to your dirty water. Try it yourself. Create a sepia picture with misty edges using dirty water. <laughs> Just taking a look at some of the art attacks that you've sent in. I'm speechless. They're so good. Take a look at this. Josh's country scene has been done with poster paint dabbed onto paper. The golds and the browns give it a real autumnal feel, don't they? And Andrew's portrait has been done brilliantly with acrylics. I love his choice of unusual colours. Spooky. Ashley has interwoven different strips of coloured papers through sugar paper to create this interesting art attack. And Michael's picture here has been made with watered-down poster paint. I really like the way the zigzag becomes less defined the further out it gets. Oil pastels have been used for this picture, Bevan's Potted Palm. A nice art material, that. And here's an interesting design from Charlotte. Look at this, a maze. Hey, Charlotte, I bet you lost yourself designing that one, eh? <laughs> I worked out my maze design in pencil first. I then turned the lines into hedges and coloured them in. Lastly, I finished it off with a black pen. Yep, great art attacks. Hey, and that maze has given me an idea, you know. Watch this. First, you need to get hold of some self-hardening clay. Now, you can buy this from most art shops or toy shops or big news agents and stationers, and you need to take a big ball about this size and roll it out flat onto an old tray or board. Now, you need the clay to be about one centimetre thick, nice and thick. And when you've done that, you need to design a maze. Now, take a paintbrush or pencil and use the ends to draw the design into the clay. And an easy way to do a maze is to start with a start point. So I'll put that in there like that, and then just do a finish point down here. 
and then just draw a wiggly line between the two so that it curves here and there. But don't make any of the curves too tight. You'll see why later. And this will be your path through the maze. I think I'll go round here like that, up there, just wiggle away. And round we come down there and then up there, round like that. Curve round there and into the finish. Now, to make the decoy paths, just draw some lines coming off that first line so that they go into other areas. Now, again, don't make any of the curves too tight. So I'll take that one up there and round like that. And this one off there. And just wrap it round like that. And don't let any of the lines go too near each other. And in fact, you could always work your maze out first on some paper and then copy it onto the clay. And when you've done the whole design, you need to dig the channels out along all of these pathways. Now, it's best to do a small section at a time and cover the rest of the clay with cling film so that it doesn't dry out. So I'll just do that top bit there. Now, to dig the channels out, use the handle of a plastic spoon. And the trick here is to make a channel that is deep enough for a marble or a bead to sit in, but not so deep as you go through to the bottom. Just going around there like that and around there. Now, just dig along the pathways, take your time, and as you dig, you'll be scraping out a bit of the clay and you can just put those back onto your main block and use it for something else later on. And it's a good idea just to keep checking as you go the width of your channel with a marble. Now, I've got a bead here. I'm going to use a bead, so that's a good width there. See that in there? It's a good width, OK? And your marble or bead should be able to roll about freely but not fall out. And when you've dug out a little away along the pathway, use your finger to smooth it out. And again, it's a good idea to maybe use a little bit of water to just wet your finger and on it goes. The whole thing, leave it on the board to dry hard overnight and you should end up with something that looks like this. Look at that. A clay maze that has gone hard with a start and a finish and lots of pathways in between that your marble or bead should be able to roll about in. Perfect. Then you can paint your maze using poster or acrylic paint. Now, you can paint it a real hedge maze colour, like dark green in the pathways. Look at that. And lighter green on the surface. And I've even painted the start and finish in bright colours so that they stand out. Now, to give it this shiny effect, when the paint is dry, you cover the whole thing in PVA glue. It looks messy to start with, but it gives it this real professional, shiny finish. And you can do any design and colour you like. How about this round one? Look at that, where all the pathways are round. Or how about doing a cobweb one? Look at this, a cobweb design. And the great thing is, they're brilliant for playing races with yourself. Just time yourself from start to finish. So off you go. Now, if you've got an hour to spare, you can watch me doing this, because it keeps falling out every time I do it. I'm not so good at it, but challenge yourself. And don't forget, you can check out the website for fact sheets on this and all the other art attacks in the show. Try it yourself, an amazing marble maze. And I'll see you ne next time. ta -ra. And there'll be more from Neil at the same time next week. But if you'd like to get...